All right, gentlemen, very happy to see both of you today. Boz, always a pleasure. But Todd Widman, man, great to have you on the show. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for the, the privilege. Yeah, this was Adrian's fantastic idea based off of a, a question that was posted from the community. And, you know, before we get into the question, I'll let everyone at home know that we're going to talk a lot about training kids. It's going to be fantastic and a topic everybody will benefit from. But if anyone's unfamiliar with you, give us a little, and they're most likely unfamiliar with you. And I'll tell you why. I feel like, you ever watch those nature shows and somebody puts up like a game camera and like a snow leopard, there's like seven of them the planet walk by and they're like, we can't believe we got this on film. This is what I feel like getting Todd Widman on camera right now is like, I'm like, this is happening. This is great. The world's going to see Todd. So give us a little background, my friend. Well, uh, Todd Woodman and married to uh, Girl My Dreams, Crystal, and three kids, 15, 12, and five, boy, boy, girl, call them the dude, the dude's brother, and the princess, <laughs> and uh, live in Missoula, Montana. Uh, I'm a born and raised uh, Montana kid that was away from Montana for a long time and then was able to uh, get our way back here um, about six or seven years ago. It was so great. Um, I had the privilege of, of meeting you guys in CrossFit. Uh, I stumbled across CrossFit when I was still in the Marine Corps. I was an officer in the Marine Corps. And it's one of those things, you know, a guy said, hey, you like to work out, check this out. And it was a website thing. And then fast forward, I got the privilege to be invited to go to a level one. And uh, that's actually where I ran across the kids course as well as ran across um, level one and my, my brain melted, you know, that's in mm -hmm. 2006. I, I thought I knew something about working out. I thought I knew something about being tough and all those things, being around a bunch of meatheads and realized I knew nothing. And uh, that started my CrossFit journey. And uh, I've had the privilege of working for CrossFit in one way, shape or form since, uh, you know, volunteer wise in 06. And then 07 is when I started to uh, work, work as a trainer, flow master kind of guy alongside you guys. And um, now my official role, I have to like look in the mirror to, to practice this. It's the, the <laughs> seminar staff development manager. So it's, it's a huge word. Don't really know what that means. Um, my job is to try and move the needle a little bit in a positive direction for everybody that's wearing a red shirt. So that's kind of where I am now. Very cool. And I'll, I'll, I'll continue to talk you up a little bit there, Todd. I mean, I feel like I've had the good fortune of being friends with you for so long and, and basically since the beginning, in my opinion, I, I think totally. we kind of both got involved around the same time and and both started crossing paths and uh, it's it's been great. And I, I want to echo what Pat said initially, you know, it's a bit of a rarity to have you on camera, <laughs> which is a shame in my opinion, yes, because, you know, there's so many people, I think, in the CrossFit world that are just like the quiet professional. They've been so good for so long doing so many positive things, but there's no fanfare around it. There's no bravado. It's just what you do because that's what you would do. It's mm -hmm. the right thing to do. And, and that's, you know, where your strengths are. And I think you exemplify that so well. You know, you're not going to be the one that's uh, seeking the spotlight ever, but man, you've been involved in so many cool things with such great success. And uh, it's, yeah, so I'm really stoked that we could get you on here. Thanks, brother. Yeah, I think the first time that I now I'm already down a rabbit hole and not addressing the topic for today. <laughs> I, I I think the first time that I saw you was it was a seminar many many years ago. Maybe it was around the 06 time frame in Jacksonville, Florida, and it was one of those ones oh, we all had I like remember this. like neon yellow or green or something. Sure, there was like 105 <laughs> interns at the seminar, like you know more than more than there were participants, and. It might have been your first time lecturing or you knew to lecturing, but I was not lecturing, I don't think, at that point in time. But all I remember was whether I had been lecturing or not, you made me feel like I'd never lectured in my life. You get up, you gave whatever lecture it was with this like just dynamic and this presence. And I just sat there like, I gotta bump my game up. This guy just like <laughs> this guy just brought the heat. And then I remember at the end, you, you may not remember this, it's etched in my mind. You look out of the crowd and you're like, any questions? And there's just silence from the crowd. And you looked at the crowd and you went, crossed it and just walked off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was like, this Wait, is amazing. This guy's amazing. Was, <laughs> that's not the story I thought you were going to tell, Pat. Was that the same seminar? Because it definitely happened in Jacksonville. I don't know if it was the same one where the lunchtime workout involved a 400 meter track that was at the 
kind of attached to the police academy mm. that we were doing the seminar out of and um, some walking lunges, I believe. And there Overhead. was what could be simpler. Overhead yeah, walking be lunge with an empty barbell, and I don't know if that yeah. was the exact seminar, but it was a it was a Jacksonville, Florida deal, and and Todd won that workout and almost ended my life. That, but that, that was workout was, yeah, all it was was uh, I didn't participate. I wanted none of it. I said no <laughs> from the from the jump. So let's be clear. But uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, than I am. <laughs> the the workout was put the bar overhead, lunge it around the track, 400 meters. And if you put the bar down, you had to do a lap until you got back to where your bar was. And you just keep going until you get the bar all the way around the track. That's it. It's just, That's just it. I, th I think I ran terrible. a 5K. Legitimately ran a 5K. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was one I've never repeated. For you know, for obvious, and everyone's like had their shirts off. They were like their armpits were sunburned. Like it was just, it was, it was. Uh, but yeah, Todd, Todd won the one. So let me let me read the question from the viewer as to why we are taking up some of Todd's precious time today. So Rich S says, "Great episode, fellas. Just you know, we only read questions that start with that that phrase. Absolutely, Great yeah. Positive feedback only. That's it." Yeah. I have a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old who are showing interest in training. We live in a mountain town, and they are all about skiing, mountain biking, and anything involving throwing their bodies into the air. I see a real benefit and teach them the fundamentals of movement correctly in the gym for their sport and future adult life. Have you any advice on how to program and structure for this age group? And we're talking how often, what movements, should I use weight, should I not use weight, how do I keep it fun? Basically, any advice would be greatly appreciated. So, got a dad out there. He's got a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old looking to get the kids fit. And like so many people, every single question is a question. No idea where to start on anything. So, I'm sure you've faced this a lot. Where does somebody like this even begin? And, and, and should a seven and nine-year-old be training? There's so much wrapped in that. Um and it's, it's such, it's such a teed up, amazing question. Like that's, that's just a dream question for me <laughs> as, as a kid's guy. Cause you know, all too often we, we all, myself included as, as parents, you kind of stumble through things or even worse, you, you think, you know, the right answer. So you don't even ask the question to other people. So just the humility, mm -hmm. just, just like, I already love this person, like whoever would have the humility to, to throw that out there is just awesome. Um, a couple kind of like global comments for it and then maybe we'll kind of work our way back down Perfect. for that age group the the trick is and again I, i've stolen this from way way smarter way better people than me which is hard to find the, the trick for that five to twelve year old age group is to keep it fun and so you're like okay well what's fun what's fun well for that age group fun's being around their friends so as a side note mm. What I would recommend to all parents is as soon as possible, get their buddies involved because you're always dad or always mom to the kid, which is a bummer. They, they're they kind of tired of hearing from you already. They don't know it, but they kind of are. Um, or they're going to kind of live back. Like, I don't really want to do that today. Now you're discussing what you want to do. And it just turns out it's a dad thing. Whereas you get their buddies involved or the, the neighborhood kids. Um, now it's fun. So the first part about fun for that age group is being around their buddies. So get their buddies involved. Um, the second part of fun, regardless of how active they are, is playing a game. So the trick is, all right, so put them around their, their buddies. No problem. We can do that. Playing a game. Well, what do you mean? Well, I, I leave that as the carrot at the end. We're just going to do some stuff and things, and I'm going to kind of trick you into some cool things. It'd be great. And then mm -hmm. let's play a game. So that's the the construct I, I would I would make for for the age group, and then to get there, I got a question, um, and I'm, I'm selfishly doing this because I can't get my own kids to work out to save my life. Um, they're profoundly <laughs> active in sports, but they just awesome. don't uh, they don't work out. And you know, as the crossroom, like I could help you so much, but I don't, you know, don't don't push it. I just I just wish the the game that makes a lot of sense to me. I haven't got their buddies involved. I'm already going to try to steal that one. I'm just, I'm confused with the game. Is the game the workout or you said you were going to do some stuff and then there's a game afterwards as the carrot? So your your question shows the, even if you don't know it, Pat, your question is showing the genius in, in your thought process. The trick. I like the, to hear the, that. The, 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 the masterful coaches of kids 
if you were to watch them doing their their CrossFit class for kids, mm-hmm. you don't know if it's the game, the warm up, the skill, the workout, okay. or they, we, you don't know what they're doing. Now the coach has a specific thing to do on, but everything is designed around a game atmosphere, mm-hmm. but, and and even below that, there's a there's a foundational level to make something fun for every age group i would i would submit to you from preschool all the way up to to a master's athlete is that they have success in what they do Mm -hmm. so my my mantra for especially this age group is do less better and how you do that is i've come up with a a little mantra again i'm such a a knucklehead when it comes to like little sayings and things, but this helps me repeat to the kids and also repeat it to people that have the privilege to coach and train kids. And then tell myself, end it before it's done. Mm-hmm. I, I understand that. Oh man. Todd, I think that's such a, uh, a great line to sit on. And I think it has so much utility beyond just training kids or the context we're talking about here. I, I mean, that's something that I firmly believe most people don't understand about consistency in training yes. is, hey, if you're waiting until you're feeling totally pounded and ground out, you're going to take more rest days than you need. You're going to go and you're like, oh, I deserve a big bowl of ice cream, whatever. Whereas if you shut it down while you're still fired up and you're like, I could have done a little bit more. You know what? You're thinking about getting in there for next time. And you're thinking about, oh, man, I can't wait to go and try X, Y, and Z. It's a completely different mindset than, uh, oh, I got to go and do this thing again. Um, oh, man, I think that's so right on the money for, and I, you know, I don't have any experience training kids really, but across the board, I feel like that's such a universal that people don't understand. Um, Just, and especially, I, I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent here, but I think, you know, the type of people that CrossFit can attract. Yep. I mean, present company excluded, you know, I know we don't have any hard headedness among the three of us, but Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I've heard that some people that get involved can be a little hard headed in their approach. And um, I think sometimes you forget that it's more powerful to set yourself up for that consistent enthusiasm rather than selling the farm in one day, hoping that that's going to be the magic ticket to being fit forever. You know, leave them, leave them just a bit, just a bit hungry for more. Yep. And, and, and even, even more than a bit, leave them starving for more mm. because the, the thing is like, we, we remember from our level ones, level twos, like the mechanics, consistency, intensity talk, which is, is so powerful. So beautiful. It's the same thing for kids. The difference is the timeline. Like we're talking, you know, to adults, mechanics, consistency, intensity, maybe that takes a couple of weeks, maybe a month before. All right. Like you're, let's add a little bit of weight or, Maybe do 2159 or go a little faster. For a kid, a seven-year-old, I think you said seven to nine-year-old, a seven-year-old, yeah, you seven have nine. seven years before testosterone and growth hormone are ripping through that kid before you have to worry about intensity. Seven wow. years. Wow, that's an interesting way to think of that, yeah. Hmm. So it's the same process. The timeline is not only is it not important to go hard today, I could care less. In fact, I'm going to give you the one thing you did well today, and then let's go play a game. And I'm going to end that before you're tired. Yeah. Because hey, I got seven years so, to get you to go fast. Sorry. Please. No, don't be sorry. One, one thing that I kind of hear in that, and I want, to, I want to make sure that my thinking is, is correct and that I'm not just jumping to conclusion. But when, when I hear you say something like that, where my brain goes is that exposure seems to be way more important than any sort of measured progress as far as weights and reps and numbers that you're tying to things. That's almost irrelevant if I'm understanding what you're saying. But what is relevant is that you touch it regularly. You get there and you get exposed to these positions. You get exposed to some of the fundamental movements. But the performance of them as far as where that goes and what that progresses to is almost not in the conversation yet. Is that? Am I thinking about that correctly? I, I couldn't. I couldn't agree more. And and the yet. That's the thing. It's like yet for like seven years yet. Wow. Like it's, it's, yeah. It's, right. it's not, I don't even. And so like for weight. Um. What I start with for, for kiddos is is not PVC pipe because you guys know train adults with PVC pipe you have this thing called bar path. And I'm still teaching my adults not to go around their face and the shoulder press because it's, mm-hmm. it's a, it's an added on like, why, 
is that not proper? Because I can do it. So you trick them into, which is kind of like another like philosophy of mine. You trick people into enjoying it and you trick people into doing it properly. If I have two markers and they're different colors, so like the blue ones and then the red ones, and I do shoulder press, I am not going to go around my face because that takes longer. I go straight. So the only thing that I ever give them first is just their hands. And then second is going to be the blue markers. And then the third, and we're talking years to get here. The, the third is going to be a piece of PVC pipe cut that large that has uh, maybe some sand in it. Mm-hmm. And so what we're doing is we're tricking them into having perfect bar path without having able to use the word bar path for so, seven years. And then a deadlift, it's not a, it's not a PVC pipe. It's a kettlebell. It's a dumbbell. It's a, it's a it's a soccer ball and then we're going to play soccer yeah and so i feel like there's an important distinction to be made here because some people will hear what you're saying and shocker you know words can be misinterpreted on the internet it happens i know you guys (laughs) (laughs) interesting and some so somebody might hear a statement like that and say okay todd what i hear you're saying is that it's not appropriate for kids to be exposed to load And I think that that is not at all what you're saying. What you're saying is that it's secondary as to what load they are exposed to, and that shouldn't be the focus, not that it's unsafe or that they shouldn't be exposed to it. Is that, would you, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, you're you're dead on. I would say it's even tertiary. We have to learn how to do it properly. Before before we can heft anything. And and so I I look at the other side of the, the coin. The, the problem with weight is that it's potentially injurious. It, it just is what it is. It's potentially injurious. Well, how, how, do, how do you fix that? Well, we, we, have, we want to load the, the body for sure. So then the question was, well, how does, how does it, an, a prepubescent child get stronger? Technique. Because mm-hmm. they don't have the growth hormone testosterone to break down muscle tissue and how to build back up with hypertrophy. That's not how their system works. So how a child gets stronger is their body physiologically figures out how to wire the musculature to do the thing they're supposed to do. That is one of the most powerful and interesting things I've heard actually about training kids. And I never thought of it that way. It's a trip. And that's why like more weight doesn't necessarily get them stronger, but it does make it potentially more injurious. Mm -hmm. So the bang for the buck is no load to super light loads. And that's, that's a, you know, it's a relative thing. Surely you can have nine, 10, 11 year olds that are tough, you know, wrestlers and mm-hmm. practitioners or, you know, football players, of course they can lift the weight. So an, another piece of that weight is that if they can do X, I, we're, we're never allowing them to do like more than a third of X, whatever X mm. is. It's impossible. So, to, like we're not maxing out, not even close. Yeah. Yeah. So in a sense, it's like the load is just a tool to give you enough feedback so that you understand where you're efficient and where it's not efficient, not a tool to try to, like you said, develop muscle or, um, you know, like uh, certainly muscle mass at that point for the reasons you, you expressed, uh, and not uh, at the sole purpose of adding more weight to that particular lift. It's, it's basically a feedback tool. It's enough feedback Mm -hmm. to be appropriate to make you more efficient, but that's kind of the end of it. Well said. Exactly. And it's, it seems like one of the biggest takeaways for for us adult CrossFitters. I don't want to paint with a broad brush, but it is one of my strengths. Is <laughs> you know, most adults are in a rush. We want it tomorrow. Right. We want it today. The heck with tomorrow. We want it today. I want my muscle up today. I want whatever it happens to be. Like it's now, now, now. And so it seems like an adult has to totally switch that off. If you are now heading out into the garage to train your children, there's there is now zero rush, which uh, when's the last time an adult had that mindset with their own training? Probably never. But it seems like the the mission critical aspect uh, and just mindset shift if you're now talking about bringing it to young kids. And, and the psychology there, Pat, that, that you bring up, maybe unknowingly, but probably knowingly, if the adult is still, whether it's the coach or dad or mom or whoever it is, if the adult is like, really focusing on the weight or the reps or the speed, the, the child, just like anybody, if you do your job right, the child's going to love you. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to like, well, 
it's important to Coach Todd that I lift more weight. So how come you didn't give me more weight? Does that mean you don't love me anymore? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to kill myself, sacrifice myself to pick up more weight. Like, no, 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 no. So rewind that a bit. My, uh, kind of the long segue to this apologies, but I, I like stories. So w w where this whole thought process came to me, I remember in seventh grade getting pinned on the mat in wrestling. And I was winning the first round. The second round is kind of 50 through the third round I'm starting to get pinned. And I hear clear as day, my dad screaming, get up, <laughs> get up, mm -hmm. get up. And I remember thinking in my mind, like, what the hell do you think I'm trying to do? Like, <laughs> it's a great if like, it was only that simple. I'm out here in a leotard <laughs> I'm working in front of on all it. my family and friends <laughs> getting pinned. And I, I remember that clearly. And so I fast forward, like, if, if you're on the sidelines as a parent, be very careful what you say to your kids doing CrossFit. Because what it'll turn into is you say, go harder, get lower, pick up more. Oh, in a weird way, you're making them potentially hate CrossFit, hate working out. And that's a that's that's a sticky, sticky road because we're, we're as, as coaches and trainers and parents, we're defining fitness for the rest of their life. Right. Uh, that first I, exposure, they don't right? look back on yeah. that as, as like a fun experience. Well, we were my friends and we'd play some games. And then after a couple of years, all of a sudden I had muscle ups. Like that's, we trick them into getting that stuff. Yeah. And it's almost they, like you, you got more things that you can play with, right? It's not like, oh, I'm trying to get the muscle up. It just happens. And then cool, I can add that into the game. And now I got more games to play bingo. versus like the muscle up being important for the muscle up sake. Nobody cares about that, right? right. Here's, here's yeah. my public service announcement, broad brush painting number two. I think the advice that you just gave, in my humble opinion, many people could apply outside the realm of CrossFit. I'm a unique character because I'm an odd person as an adult American male. I really don't care about sports, uh, football, baseball, basketball. Like, I really don't care. <laughs> um, my, my kids love sports, so I go to these sports, but I'm yeah. unusually detached uh, compared to most parents since I'm not a sports nut. The behavior that I see from the parents in the crowds and what I hear the parents yelling to their children playing just a kid's sport that's I hate to say the word meaningless, but we're not going to the to the finals or, you know, whatever it is. There's not a Nike sponsorship on the table, right? <laughs> so. It's appalling. The pressure and the negativity and like adults swearing at kids on the other team. I'm like, where am I in an alter, a, a different universe? So I would just say CrossFit or not, if you're a parent, you are shaping some young person's view on whatever that sport happens to be. And you know, kind of like your story, and I have several like that myself. If you don't think that that young person is going to remember that a couple of decades from now, I think you are greatly mistaken. Yeah. So um, I it, would just, it, just think before you speak. That's all. Yeah, it definitely seems to be one of those situations where you can't force anybody to love anything, right? Like that never works. You can't, you can't do that through... Uh, you know, policy, you can't do mm. that through force. You can't, you can't force somebody to love something or to care about it. <laughs> right. um, but you can certainly set the conditions where they're going to hate it. You can mess it up. And they're going to come back. And yeah, Very exactly. Cool. You know, and, <laughs> and that definitely seems to be the case here where it's like, hey, man, you're not, you're not going to make them love it for life. Um, but you can certainly make them have an aversion forever. Uh, so yeah, that's a bummer. Um, I, I want to change the topic just ever so slightly. Sure. You know, we've been talking about kind of some generalities here. And, um, you know, a lot of it is kind of boiling down to a broad approach, which should be no surprise. We're talking CrossFit. It's a broad approach by design. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to me from the outside looking in, I don't have kids, you know, again, I'm not that invested in, in terms of like what is happening with youth sports. Um, but I've definitely heard it from other parents and, and observed it kind of secondhand where the belief currently seems to be that kids need to specialize in an activity earlier and earlier and earlier. And some of that I think is just kind of a go with the flow mentality that that's kind of what's happening. And so people don't really question it. They just do it. Mm -hmm. um, but some of it, I think, is very intentional where people believe that if they want to, quote, get good or win, it's like, well, if you don't start by age six, like you're going to be way behind the curve and then it's never going to happen for you. Um, 
what's your experience been with you know training kids and then i know that you've worked with some some youth sports as well can you just kind of talk on that the difference between a belief that a specialty is necessary early on and a more general approach for sure yeah it's it's a really tough one because uh, full disclosure i i've very much felt the, the urge to, to create sports specific programming uh, over and over again in my my short you know short 15 years of, of coaching kiddos and all of the research all of the my personal experience has continually brought me back to the reality that that I that I believe is we can do no greater service to a child young adult and I dare say even into adult than by building up their GPP and mm-hmm. I've had I've had the privilege of you know from you know the six seven eight nine ten year olds to the the high schoolers and then the college on to pro and the urge to like you know make oh well you're in the football team so we're going to do the football sprints you're going to hit and then or the urge uh, wrestlers to you know throw things and and this technique and or soccer players to to kick a ball. And what I've found is bar none, my my experience has been nothing but success by just redoubling the efforts on GPP. Mm-hmm. GPP is what fills in all the gaps. And I gotta tell you, the 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 pernicious problem of of sport specificity especially at a young age is you have these these overuse injuries at incredibly young ages because they don't have the strength awareness body composition to deal with throwing a ball that many times as a young man or or you know whatever the sport is sure running jumping they don't have the, the base that we used to have as kids and so not only you know, they're not running, jumping, playing around like we did as kids off in the woods. So they just have that kind of like body awareness and GPP. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know about you guys. I started in like junior high and high school. That's when I was, I was an athlete. That's what I did. So I had all that base of just being a human being. And then that mm-hmm. our kids don't have that. And then they start playing sports at six right. year round baseball and then have Tommy John surgery at 10. It's like, what on earth is happening? And it's normal. It's, this is what they do. So that's the negative. The positive side is laws without question GPP. And then the, the few additional pieces, always some type of jumping. Hmm. Uh, jumping, not only because explosive hit helps in everything. And mm-hmm. that's what you do is jump on things, jump around things. And also something called, uh, in the vernacular, it's called impact loading. And what that means yep. is that the, the having no load to then having a lot of load, that instantaneous change is what builds a whole lot of bone density and also builds a whole lot of strength. So jumping on stuff, jumping off stuff, burpees, walking on hands, mm-hmm. uh, jerks for, for older kids, you know, that, that instantaneous mm-hmm. nothing to something, uh, punching a punching bag, that type of stuff is what really builds the resiliency in a human body. You know, what's interesting, touching on the first part of your question, um, with kids playing multiple sports or specificity or getting pigeonholed into something, I don't know if I'm crazy. I don't want to be that adult that suddenly doesn't remember history properly or looks through when I was a kid with rose-colored glasses. But I feel like back when I was growing up, sports were more of this just fun thing. Almost everything was a rec league. You want to play Little League. It was somewhat infrequent. You got a you got a shirt from the local pizza place who decided right. to sponsor you, and and that was it. These days, it's a business, you know, with your registration fees and everything else. And the longer that they can extend the season, and the more tournaments they can get your kid to, it's more revenue. And now all the seasons also overlap. And so if you've got a children like our our kids play, you know, lacrosse, basketball, and football, and all of those seasons overlap more and more every year because they Mm -hmm. keep extending it and then each you know obviously if you're coaching lacrosse it's because your world revolves around lacrosse if you're if you're decided to spend your free time coaching football you're a football nut so your sport is the most important thing on the face of the earth as far as you're concerned sure but you've put the kids in this weird position where all the seasons overlap so i have to miss some practice and others and they've got this 
weird anxiety and pressure and the coach is yelling at them in a sport that used to be fun. And, and like you're saying, and then, and that to some degree at a certain age becomes unsustainable. And then whether they wanted to be a multi-sport athlete or not for fun, they're almost forced into specificity because for years mm -hmm. they've been getting grief from everybody trying to do this overlap. They're like, all right, fine. I'm going to pick something. And that sport grows. And you're right. They're doing this just repetitive thing over and over and over again. It's an interesting cycle of all kinds of different things um, um, interwoven yeah. there that, that I can see on it's, top it's of also, on top of everything else, the GBP would be so wonderful because it would undo some of that. It undo physically, and it also the, the sneaky thing is that the more you do the sport for a long time, the better you get. And so you think like, okay, this is working. Mm -hmm. But so not only is the body going to be more set up for these young men, and young women to break down, but even more importantly, I don't want to do this anymore. And the perfect right. example is wrestling, youth wrestling. Parents yelling at five year olds on the mat. So then they do more practice, they do more camps, and they do more yelling, and then six and seven, and then they start getting better and they have success. Well, we need to do more. I need to go to bigger camps, and you get to beat on my more people. And, mm -hmm. and by, you need to work harder, and by God, you need to be tough. And by the time they're 12, they're really good. And they're beating on people who are just getting in the sport. And then they get to high school and they quit the sport. And they burnt done. out. And the kids that are just getting into like junior high, like, okay, I'm getting, taking my lumps, high school. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to wrestle. And by the time that kid's a senior, he is crushing almost all the kids that have been doing it forever, yelled at by dad because he didn't. Mm -hmm. him. He Interesting. Just, this yeah, is like, a crazy, trippy thing. You know, I, I've just got a limited experience and I, I brought this up before, but, you know, we used to coach a youth rowing team uh, oh, cool. way back in the day. We were responsible for their uh, dry land training. And that was the biggest thing that we noticed was that they were already a championship team. I mean, these kids were great at what they did. We had very little to do with their success on race day. But what we had a huge impact on was getting them out of the motor patterns that they did all season long that just beat them up. You know, they, they were row all the way through the season and do not do much else. If they Jeez. did something else, it was like they would go jog. And we all know the injury rate for just jogging. I mean, it's massive, <laughs> exactly. right? Yeah. So it's one of those things where the biggest impact we had was that we kept the kids able to be in the boat longer. Like they, they could be in the season without getting hurt longer than they could have otherwise, or at least they had a better shot at that. And that was the biggest impact that we had. It wasn't on their raw capability. Exactly. Um, and then kind of the second thing I think too with that too is like, man, I think back to being 15, 17, 20 and to think that I had a clear picture of what I wanted to dedicate myself to physically or otherwise, I mean, it's laughable, right? And so, sure. you know, it's, it's great if you have somebody that is so able to identify this is what I am going to do and this is who I am. But I mean, I feel like that's pretty rare. Mm -hmm. So if you are only putting all your eggs in that basket and then you decide that basket isn't for you anymore, I mean, where does that leave you versus if you've got a pretty well a developed general background and you're generally athletic and you decide, you know what, I've been doing wrestling, for example, for 10 years and I, it, I'm not into it anymore. I want to pick up baseball. It's not going to be as rough a transition if you've been continuing to build that base. At least it seems that way. So totally agree. I mean, just yeah. for the pragmatic reason of keeping your options open, it seems like it'd be worth investing some time there. Variance is a wonderful thing. And you've given a lot of gems on this so far, Todd, I'm actually I'm keeping a running list on my computer to make myself uh, better with my kids. <sighs> Maybe the question I'm going to get isn't, it's not a perfect analog. So if so, if it's not, that'll be useful as well. But maybe there's somebody at home like, okay, I got it. Sounds good. Keep it fun. Games. I'm not going to worry about the loading. Technique is paramount. I got seven years. Great. Um, and they're like, okay, like I know what I'm going to do every day for my training. Maybe I can do a version of that for my kids. Like I can see that being a, a logical progression somebody might have. They're like, oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm today I'm doing Fran. I'm doing thrusters and pull-ups, heaven forbid. Is, is something like that, is it something that could be just quote unquote modified for kids or right off the bat, you're like, no, it, it wouldn't look anything like what you visualize when you say Fran. So if dad or mom's doing Fran and their 10-year-old wants to play with them, what does it look like that day for that kid? 
is the 10 year old a crossfitter or is it his first day uh let's say they're not first day you but, but they're novice privilege. they're novice you they're know novice. so the first is if if he or she wants to do it if and that's a giant if you oh. should force him with a stern voice. One hundred percent. Tell him to get out to the shop right now. <laughs> You've been listening, Pat. This is good. <laughs> yeah. um, and then the second piece, I would absolutely make it way easier on them than they even think they can do. And then I would put some type of, and if it's working out with you, which is the, you know leadership by example is the leadership. I love it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would put parameters on it S- simple parameters like uh when i am done with thrusters whatever the version i chose for the the dude or lady doing thrusters mm-hmm. you're done with them gotcha okay so yep. if i'm doing you know i've got my 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 four minute fran mm-hmm. well, i'll be doing my first set of thrusters for you know 30 45 seconds cool well you're doing air squats while daddy's doing thrusters gotcha okay and then, oh, yeah, time to go to the pull-up bar. When I'm doing pull-ups, you're doing ring rows. Mm-hmm. And then you make sure that like, you're not allowed to keep going until that is done. So you just keep going as long as that. That that type of like. Okay. And then they finish with you. High five. So proud of you, man. You did a really good job. Let's go get a lollipop. That makes a lot of sense to me. So to some degree, not, I mean, I'm certainly not trying to um, oversimplify the complexity of doing things properly with young human beings that are developing sure, physiologically sure. and mentally. But it sure. can be to some degree, like I'm going to do thrusters and pull-ups. You're going to do something that looks really similar with dramatically less loading to no loading. And we're mm-hmm. not going to worry about your intensity. We're going to make it really fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kids are are way better than us uh, when when they're dealing with intensity. They just stop. And so, allow, <laughs> you know, yeah. allowing that to, to them, have them not feel guilty about it is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, when yeah. they get into junior high, high school, that's when they start to become knuckleheads like us, where they they fight through that pain, which is an interesting, potentially piece to bring out that fun changes once once testosterone hits. Mm. It's fun for mm. the kids or being around their friends and playing the game. And it's not that the teens don't like being around their friends. Of course they do. And it's not that they don't like games. Heck, I like games. Mm-hmm. But the point is, that's not why they're doing what they're doing. They're working out because they want to get bigger, faster, stronger, better for whatever reason they want to get better, faster, mm-hmm. stronger. So for that group, the carrot is you can lift as much weight and go as fast as possible as long as you do it perfectly. Mm-hmm. So the like the the stop gap is, hey man, you're you're moving perfectly. You can put on two and a halves, and yep. it's very small increments. And then the next time you can put on fives you know very 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 small uh increments but the point is you earn the load that you have and just figuring out like you said the carrot or what motivates them at whatever particular age it is what's important to them at that phase in their life yeah and that's where i'd like going to the the can i work out with with the son or daughter of of course you can that's cool as long as you make it a cool family event but i wouldn't stick there so yeah i wouldn't live there because that's thrusters and pull-ups are no fun for anybody, right. we just understand, <laughs> like we understand the, the third order causal effect is I'm going to get stronger, faster, better for the, my yeah. personal goals, but they're terrible. Mm-hmm. It, the well, kid, that's, oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, I think that's really, it's an important reminder though, for anybody. And, and I think to your point, you know, as adults, you get fixed on the structure of the thing. You know, the workout yep. is 21, 15, and nine, and anything beyond that is not the workout. And while that might be true, it's a trick that you're playing on yourself to believe that that rep scheme has any magic behind it. There is no magic behind that. And if that rep scheme were 17, whatever I felt like on the second set, and then four, you know, there is still going to be a pretty great training effect. And it's probably not going to be necessarily better or worse than what you set out to do, except for the pressure you put on this thing being specific before you started it Mm -hmm. and you know it seems like that's just a really really dramatic version of of what kids experience right where it's like yeah you might have this idea of what the workout's going to be but at the end of the day the number the duration all that kind of stuff it doesn't really matter and what matters is that the experience is positive and that's the real crux and anything beyond that is like well you blew it kind of right like is that too reductionist 
No, no. And, and I would just I would put a little like a cherry on top of that. I, I think that's absolutely true. But I also want to be clear with intensity is still the, the key. Like the intensity is still what gives you the juice. And so that you, you have this like, well, how do you push them? You can't, like you said, unless you want them to hate it. Mm-hmm. So I like to trick people into working harder than they want to. For example, using kids. Um, we do a lot of stuff where you're in lines for relays. And it's, okay, guys, you're going to bear crawl down. You're going to do a sit up and bear crawl back. And it doesn't matter how fast you go without saying <laughs> that they automatically race each other. That's a great point. <laughs> so yeah. they're choosing to race each other. And they never have the pressure of, of coaches telling me to go faster. I got to get yeah. done in one minute or I've got to get 10 reps. And then as that's happening, I'm praising the, the, the people that are doing the thing that I want. So remember I talked about earlier on, like you got to be careful with weight and reps because then that's, what's important. And they love you. So I, I set it out and it's a mantra. I make all the kids repeat in class. The, the mantra is work hard, be tough. So what's important to me is that you work hard and that you're tough. It's not like in a masculine tough, it's resiliency. I Mm -hmm. want someone to take a knock and come back up, whatever happens. I want them to be able to do that. So I had to repeat that back to me. Okay, who can yell loudest? Work hard, be tough. Yay, you get to choose the game. Like just making it cool to, I know work hard, be tough. And now when we're doing it, I watch the person that I think is working hardest, not who gets the most reps. The best athletes can get mm. the most reps. Who cares? So say we're doing box jumps and, I don't know, box jumps and, and jumping jacks, whatever. We get done. I, 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 I intentionally choose the child that legitimately is working hard. Maybe they got one box jump. Maybe it's one of my special needs kids that they, they do a box step up with help. Mm-hmm. Maybe Maybe it's my... A uh, young lady, this it's her second day and she's obese. It's her second day in class. And she they get the fire in the gut that day, though. Right. Mm-hmm. But, you know, yep. the, the super stud got 58 box jumps. Mm-hmm. What I do is I recognize at the end of the class, everybody come in here for a little school circle. Awesome. So, Annie, you worked hardest today. What would you like to say for the cheer? Uh, CrossFit Kids rules. Right on. CrossFit Kids <laughs> rules. Now everybody's fighting to work harder to be able to then give the cheer. And they also know that yeah. the highest reps didn't necessarily win. Like you said, it's it, so that well, it, I didn't even pay attention to it because, hey, you got 55, you should have gotten 56, you'd have worked harder. <laughs> and one other thing that's really important in there that I think is easy to miss is that all you're focusing on, on is the behavior that you want people to model, not the negative example that could be happening in the background. You're not, you're not pointing out like, hey, that's wrong don't do it that way because now that's the focus right and that's a very negative reinforcement of the thing instead it's hey this is the thing that i want everybody to aim for and that becomes the focus that's like the sole focus right like you, you're not at all trying to highlight the negative and it, it seems like that's for many reasons number one obviously not to turn the kids off of it right. uh, but number two to point them towards something to be like instead of the secondary kind of abstraction of what not to do and then there's another piece of that, boss. It's, 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 it's insane that as a parent, I fail uh, at least a hundred times a day. Amen. A, a child is just like an adult. A child is looking for attention. And that includes negative attention. Mm. So if you, yep. if right. you give them the attention of, Hey, boss, get your knees out, boss, speed up. That's still attention or boss quit stand in line quit playing with their hair, you're still getting attention. Pat is doing what I want him to do. But instead of him getting attention, I'm giving it to the person who's not doing it. So then Pat in his brain goes, wait, wait, wait. So I do what I'm supposed to do. And Coach Todd does love on me. What's happening? Mm-hmm. And now I'm yep. spending my parental or my, my coaching time on the problem instead of rewind it intentionally in front of, you know, boss being problem child. Hey, Pat, I really appreciate how you're quiet and paying attention to me. That's oh, so that's what you're supposed to do. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. It's a powerful little piece of psychology. And and that that transcends to some other just human interactions as well. If you want to 
encourage behavior is maybe a good way to say it in mm -hmm. child, teen, or adult. You know, you can go two routes. You can you can yeah. praise the good when you see it or criticize the bad. And yep. study after study has shown that the praising of the good is more powerful. And so for an example could be you just want with all of your heart your your teenage son to take his plate off of the table and put it in the sink after dinner like just <laughs> just that and he, he never does and you can just get on him and get on him and get on. and you right. might get you might get a certain you might gain some real estate like that to some degree but the opposite is proven to be supposedly more powerful which is if he only does it one out of ten times instead of harping on the nine the one time that he does it you just shower the praise like hey fantastic job i really appreciate that i know we've been talking about it and you know, it slips your mind a lot, but man, that, that meant a lot. Just thank you. Like that sticks in their head and they want that again, you know, and that one out of 10 might turn into three out of 10 over the course of next month. And, and it seems like that to some degree, you know, can be applied to running a class and just, you know, you know, to every, to every degree, uh, to, to every degree. I, I couldn't agree more. And it's, mm -hmm. it's a constant battle for me more at home than in class in class i'm able to kind of make that switch like okay only going to talk about the good and not going to and get home like hey do it put your plate up and like oh <laughs> absolutely i've i've got a couple questions i want to like pepper you with uh but but i want to hit you with one more just scenario before i do that because maybe if, if somebody's listening they're like okay the fran scenario made sense gotcha air squats you know, so-and-so's got two pound dumbbells in their hand, whatever, whatever makes sense, ring rows, go, you go with me. But what if it is um, a heavy day? You say, we're not looking to lift big weight, right? But so-and-so still wants to go into the garage with me. If, if it's something, if it's a heavy day and it's a bit on the complex side, like let's say it's seven by one power clean, is that just a day that just categorically doesn't make sense? Or is there a good little thing that you can do with me even though it's my heavy day that's beneficial to you as well i think there's definitely a benefit just to be above board i think it's always going to be better with that age or i shouldn't say i hate always they're almost always better to have them with their peer group and you're coaching them mm -hmm. like almost across the board because like, like, think about being a kid you love your parents if if you're lucky and they're right. awesome but you don't want to hang around them. You want to hang around your buddies. You right. Wanna, very true. You want to play catch with your buddies. You don't want to play football with your dad. He'll smash you every time. Like you mm -hmm. want. So for that reason, I would first say get their buddies involved in you coaching. But I if, already if, forgot that point. So I'm glad you brought <laughs> that up again. Okay. <laughs> if, if, if they're with you though, if they're with you, totally. I would say some skill work is absolutely awesome. Um, and it's, it's something I visit quite often. And and it's it's nothing more than some type of drill that makes sense to you. And it's just technique, technique, yeah, technique, keys to the thumbs, kingdom. Touch your your sides and then work through, and then you put some type of funny, you know, facial expressions, body language into it, and have them work a couple and praise them for it. High five, cool. Now let's see if Daddy can listen to the instruction. I'm going to lift some weight here. You can sit there and kick the soccer ball against the wall for half hour. Mm -hmm. while I'm stuff. Perfect. Okay. Yep. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I got. A couple things here. We've covered some of them, but I figure I could just give you a little machine gun fire round. Um, and, and Boz, keep me sane if I'm missing something here. And these are just yep. general general topics that are just vast. That you maybe just a oh. short answer. Um, uh, how old is too young? Like you're like you know what this, this individual just shouldn't even be in the gym. Uh, if you have a class. So uh, if you have you know, an instructor or trainer, whether it's you or somebody else, if you have a class too young, it's going to be they're not potty trained. So oh, it's okay. a mixture they're potty yeah. trained and they want to be there. Right, and right. Usually okay. it's around four or five. That's usually okay. your, sometimes you get a, you know, the, the third sibling as a three-year-old and they've already been, you know, tussled around by the other <laughs> older brothers and sisters. They're like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. I'm in. So sometimes, but usually it's like four or five. And on the opposite side of the spe spectrum, when is it like, I'm not dealing with a kid anymore, free reign. I'm going to train you like any other, you know, former college athlete that walked into my camp. Is it, is it a young teenager? Is it not to the north of 18? Like, what's that, you know, free reign kind of age? Still with it's, obviously intelligent training, mechanics, consistent oh, sure, intensity, but oh, we're sure. not talking kids, so to speak. Once you start getting into the teen stuff, there's, there's an, an, an interesting dynamic. And and one of them is that 
they're totally ready to put on massive strength and speed and like ability. They're 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 physiologically they're a sponge. Their the body's pumping more testosterone, and they're they're learning. And they they're the type that gets PRs every single time they walk in the gym, whether or not they had a Big Mac and fries before. Like mm-hmm. they just crush it. Not fair. <laughs> so the, yeah, totally. That's the the positive. The the stuff that gets weird is that they're also young adults, mm-hmm. and you have to be very cognizant of the fact that you bring a young adult into an adult atmosphere. I, I'm a huge proponent in really taking the, the due diligence and, and service for that, that athlete to make sure that you don't put them in an awkward situation and you don't put yourself in an awkward situation. Mm-hmm. Um, things like never one-on-ones with teens and right. try to always have a, an opposite gender coach with you. And, you know, stuff like that starts to bring mm-hmm. different types of very weird but i think wars bringing up um, but important i mean it's the world that mm-hmm. we live in it's, yeah. it's that's it is what Definitely. it is you know better to better to err on the side of caution on a whole bunch of different levels a whole bunch of different levels and and that kind of leads into uh, uh, i often get asked like todd do you recommend uh teens join the adult class and my 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 answer is if there's no teen class and that's what they want to do that's rad Mm, um, okay. definitely encourage the coach to you know maybe go to the CrossFit Kids course so they can kind of be inundated in this stuff and and also encourage them to get a background check and encourage like them to think about the different stuff that goes involved but if there's a teen class I would say do that um adults like to be adults and what I mean like you know a 27 year old dude he wants to go into the gym skin it to win it Right. And put on hard gangster rap. Right. And then if you have a 16 year old young lady, all of a sudden it gets real weird real quick. Mm-hmm. Now it's not wrong. It's not bad. It's just that like you got to think through these processes that, wow. What, like, oh, I'm right there with you as, as the father to a daughter. Yeah. Be like, let's pump the hey. brakes. What, what do you, what environment are you walking into here? Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, and then that brings up whole other issues of, you know, proper, attire for the age groups and and how, how are you going to coach and deal with them um there's a lot of pieces to that that it's definitely for those who have not had the privilege of, of training teens before it's, mm-hmm. it's a different world in a lot of weird ways but it's also just like training fire breeders because they're they're set up for unbelievable physical set success and you know, I, I haven't attended it, but are topics like that that maybe wouldn't leap to somebody's mind that trains adults all the time? Are those covered in the CrossFit Kids courses as well? They are, yeah. And we have some resources that we provide just so if you're like me, when, when I started down the kids path and specifically CrossFit Kids path, I was really um, blessedly ignorant to all the insanity that mm-hmm. it was with with um, dealing with adults and children and all, and how weird it can get and how bad it can get. I was completely ignorant to it. So I dove into the literature so I could go down that dirty, dark path so that I could figure out a way to try and teach people on how to combat against it. Because, you know, no, nothing worse for a young man and young women than as a leader to not know the problems. Because okay. how are you going to prepare them for the problem if, they don't even, if you don't even know the problem? So, right. I figure out the problem, why it happens, and then that's what's created how we teach people to to be able to set up their their gyms and their actions and their their coaching, human correcting to hopefully help them avoid avoid some of these problems, if not all. Well, just as a parent too, like maybe I was, let's say, on on the outside familiar with CrossFit, heard that it works. Um, you know, so and so looks like a beast. Yeah, our, our son or daughter's interest in sports. This seems like it'd be a good fit. You know. And then maybe these other things have never popped into my mind. Mm-hmm. I go to the local gym that I've heard has a good program. And I speak to somebody like yourself. And on top of what's going to happen on the strength and conditioning side, I hear all these other things to just make the environment top notch in ways that I had even considered. It's going to put me at ease so much and give sure. me a level of yep. security and confidence when I drop my kid off there, unrelated to the strength and conditioning aspect. That it's just going to be, I think that's just a win-win. And I hadn't even, I hadn't even considered any of that stuff previous to this interview. So I'm I'm quite glad that you actually opened up that can of worms a little bit. There's one little piece that you just flashed in my head, if I could just indulge. 
to take that one step further that I would not have known if I didn't have the privilege of doing this stuff. You can become an ally to that that family in a very interesting way. It's it's come once the parents and the kids look to you as like, okay, he's he's true and he's doing his thing, he's real, and I can trust this guy. All of a sudden, parents will come up to you before or after class, say, "Hey, Todd, uh, Dane had had a, a tough week this week, and he and he failed a test." Mm. So now the topic of conversation that day is, hey, guys, sometimes we fail tests, but, then, you know, and that's mm. how it goes. And we just work mm. harder and this and that. And then all of a sudden you're helping parent and you're helping be a, a provider for, for security and love for that kid, whether or not they ever find out. How it's, awesome it's a is that? Experience. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the the stuff that's not readily apparent that's equally, if not more gratifying than, you know, yeah. five pounds more on the deadlift. Sweet. That's super cool. Don't get me wrong. But great. <laughs> but that, uh, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, okay. Well, um, I think it, go ahead. it kind of harkens back to the idea of consistency too. Like if you have a trust that's established, you have a great rapport, that sort of thing. That's just one more tool that's going to stack the deck in your favor so that consistency can be achieved. I mean, I think that the more, like the older I get and the more I get into fitness, it's like method almost doesn't matter. I mean, it does. Right. And certainly there's things you can do that are better than others. And, you know, that's reality. But on the other hand, it's like, if you're not showing up, it doesn't matter what you hoped to have done because mm -hmm. you're not showing up to do it. It doesn't matter. Yep. And so like the big, big, big building block always comes down to what is going to set you up to be most likely to go do the thing. And that's just one more example of something you probably aren't thinking about as primary as a coach. But if you can establish it, man, the likelihood that people are going to keep coming through the door goes up dramatically, you know, and therefore chances of success go up dramatically. Yeah, that seems... Once you spell it out, it's like, well, duh, you know, right, right. <laughs> it's not, it's not one that you're probably going to be, um, you know, thinking about tip of brain as a, as right. a coach or a new coach. Yeah, I certainly wasn't. Todd, roughly speaking, any guidelines for how long a session should be? For kids age, um, 30 to 40 minutes. Oh, for, okay. For teens hours, totally appropriate. And okay. then for teens, once they gain a, a body awareness and strength and ability in, in the team type class. Um, then I would also add a weightlifting uh, addition uh, to them twice a week, uh, focusing on the back squat and the deadlift, just because they're king and queen of getting strong. You know, mm -hmm. it is like your, your your deadlift goes up, so does your bench. But I can't say the other way around. So we spend time deadlifting and back squat. Funny how that works. Cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like on that right. same kind of vein do you have um like a top three or top five movements that you would recommend um for the younger set and then you know again through the teenage years like and how much does that change if any gosh that's a fantastic question i'm gonna start with teen because i have an automatic answer to that i know I'm, I'm trying to think about the kid answer for the teens back squat and deadlift and then uh, of course i i, I switch between sumo frog and conventional just to get their hips in different different uh kind of angles on that deadlift then back squat back squat back squat with a with a high dose of box squat so they get used to the going back with the hips um mm. so that's my go-to's uh of hitting for the teens for the for the kids i i would be remiss it's certainly squarely in the nine foundational for sure yeah like squarely in we live there, mm -hmm. but the variance is such a piece. I want to continually bounce around because also it's fun for the kids. Like, what are we doing today? Yeah. Just like adults. Yeah. And it's like, oh, sweet. What's this thing? Right. Uh, anything to avoid pitfalls, lessons learned, common mistakes? Other than what we've talked about, I'd say pitfalls for training children. Do your best to not push them. Let them push themselves. Easy to say, hard to do. It's almost impossible. <laughs> it's almost impossible. <laughs> and and it's, it's how you how you go about it. You know, it's how it's how you respond to the, the kids that are in front of you. It's 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 what you say. It's 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 what you point out is important. That's that's what they start to you know work towards as as we've already identified. So I say, be careful not to push them. Um, be for be. I was going to almost say forgiving, but I, I didn't even change it more. So be open to other sports and activities. 
Mm. Because once that kid and or parent, once they start to trust you, then there's this weird flip where they did, they were a football kid and that's what they loved and they lived for football, but this CrossFit's great and I'm not playing football anymore. I want to do CrossFit. It's like, dude, do football. You have very few years that you can show up to a sport <laughs> and actually play and have fun with it. Uh, you have the rest of your life to do CrossFit. So not only yeah, like, it's not going not anywhere. Only discouraging yeah. focus on CrossFit, but like encouraging. I, I train you in this gym so you guys can go play baseball. So you can go on the swim team. So you, and also you better send me your schedule so I can come watch you. Nothing mm. makes me happier than going to one of the games and seeing one of my CrossFit athletes and they're running up and down the field faster along than everybody else. Cause they're studs and in shape. Like that's, that's what I want. I don't, I don't want the CrossFit stuff. I don't want the stud that's doing what they want to do. That that actually brings me to what I've potentially going to be one of my my final questions to you, which was, do you have not to put you in the spot, but just a story that sticks out in your head of of training in the kids' realm that was particularly impactful? Could be on a physical, emotional, whatever sort of a level. Uh, it was either impactful on you as the coach or on on them. That just is like, man, this is why this is why we do this. Oh my. Too many. I'll, I'll get to uh, the first one that's on my head. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had the privilege of being invited to uh, one of my teens, uh, former, former teens, weddings. So she oh, wow. I started training her as a seventh grader all through junior high, all through high school. And then she went on in college to get her level one and then coach people. And uh, it was like, it was such a, a surreal experience to have the privilege to be then invited to her wedding. And she's, wow. you know, it was just so like full. Wow. Circle. And man, I, I, I don't want to jump in on your story there, but what really strikes me for something like that is I, it, maybe it's just my perception, but I feel like these days, and this is, I put my old man hat on here a little bit, <laughs> but it's like these days, the, idea of a youth having a long-term relationship with somebody who is an adult peer mm -hmm. seems less and less likely and frequent but the power of something like that where you have a trusted person who's you know been in the world a little bit and can guide you through some of these life decisions that's external to your family i mean that's really remarkable so what a cool thing to uh to have been a part of that's that i don't know you just blew my, my mind a little bit with that one that's cool <laughs> Chances are she didn't invite her dentist, you know, as, <laughs> yeah, exactly as, right. as Greg Glassman would say, like you yeah. are, if you train right. somebody well, you become a, a part of the fabric of their life. So, you know, I'm, you know can right. continue on, would you, would, please, please keep going. Um, that, that, that was certainly a trippy experience. Um, and then, I mean, I had the privilege of not to, you know, release too many details and stuff, just to sure. you know, don't put anybody in a weird spot. Uh, a parent came to me about some of the, the people I was training and let on that they were having a tough time at home. Like having a tough time with, mm -hmm. with a dad who was, had gone down the wrong path with drugs and was, was laying into the kids. And I was able to, like I said, be that kind of like the uncle guy. Mm -hmm. never letting on that i knew that but just being there like hey man to kind of being that that trusted male figure that didn't let him down and it was uh you know they're they're very very special people to me to this day and and just just the impact like you said the impact that you have yes the deadlift's awesome and and our vernacular squats and deadlifts and presses but what we're what we're trying to do is just create better human beings and specifically better than us. <laughs> yeah. And, and we don't need to, to dwell on that, uh, you know, and obviously don't, don't want to, as you said, divulge anyone's personal information, sure. but, but without even knowing more than that about the situation, I can almost say that regardless of what you do with that young individual strength and conditioning, mm -hmm. what you're doing in that realm is going to have tenfold the impact on their life than whatever the heck they're back squatting. I mean that right. that is mission critical human development on a on a level of power that we can't even dive into on this uh, on this show. And mm -hmm. that's the stuff that maybe again isn't just doesn't pop into your head if you're like I'm going to become a trainer. It's like great, <laughs> right. 
right. that's, there's a lot more going on there than you might realize at first. Something that we uh, that we've coined in the kids kids program is that we don't change people's lives; we shape them. And the, the differentiation being, if you change someone's life at the age of six by a degree, by the time they're eighteen, they're a different human being, mm. capable of doing things that would never have been on the plate had that had that changed. So shaping is what we do, and it takes a way longer. But I can tell you now that I'm on the end of, you know, I've got people that have you know, been trained 15 so years, I'm on the end where it, it's, it's an infinitely more rewarding process because they, they get the college scholarship. They, they marry the, the love of their life. They, they go on to get the job. They, they, you know, they forgive their dad for things like that. You see this process of life and it's just, it's, it's humbling and it's, it's very much gratifying. I can't think of a better way to wrap it up. Yeah. Wow. I, I was, yeah. It's powerful stuff, man. That's, uh, that's awesome. Todd, I don't know what else to say other than truly and genuinely thank you for your time, knowledge, and, and expertise. I think people are going to really benefit from it. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Sure. Well, as we say at the end of all these shows, I mean, now you've heard, you know, what Boz and I think a little bit and, you know, largely uh, what Todd thinks here. And if you've got experience, questions, anything in the realm of training kids or teens, we'd love to hear about it. More more people on the conversation is better than fewer people. So if you're listening in audio format, of course, we appreciate it. But I encourage you to find this episode on the BTWB YouTube channel. And in the comments, post your thoughts, your experiences, your lessons learned. You know, what have you found ways to make it fun? You know, what are things that you wish you knew before you started this whole path? And and let's just make it a resource for everybody. Uh, and Todd, if somebody wants to become better at training kids, what's your go-to recommendation? Do it. Just, just start. Just start. And start. CrossFit does offer a kids program. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, CrossFit uh, Kids is, is a course that we provide on uh, it's a webinar, um, and it's it's a two day course, and it'll it'll give you booster rockets off into to all the, the the thought process behind what we're talking about. Well, again, much appreciated. Enjoy it. There's a whole lot more to being a trainer than than you may first think, but the journey is worth it. So, mm -hmm. for Todd Woodman and Adrian Bosman, I'm Pat Sherwood, and we will see you next time.